He just wants us to pray for him and his ministry. And I just thought that was really neat. And I put some cards out there. And uh, man, what an opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, and, and with the two by two, uh, I hope we're grabbing. I got plenty of the cards out there, uh, the little welcome cards. So make sure you're grabbing some. Uh, and there's business cards too, not those. But you'll see the little cards, and I can point them to you at the end. But, but I do want to read this. It says, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. So at the proper time, He will exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. 
Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, resist in him, firm in your faith. Resist in him, firm in your faith. That's the direction, knowing that the same kind of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. So, resist in him. How do we do that? What does it look like? Because we know the devil's prowling. Um, and man, he will, he's, the setup is there. Uh, will we be smart enough? Will we be in God's word enough to see it when it comes? Uh, like Paul says, the itching ears. Will we, will we be able to see that when it comes? Uh, and then I do, I normally don't do this, but I have uh, an urgent prayer request. Uh, my mother-in-law texted me and said, uh, we're going to monitor this. But she said she was having some, uh, some pretty heavy uh, chest pains. Um, so I do, as we uh, pray for Tobin, and as I open in prayer, uh, please keep uh, my mother-in-law, Marty, in your prayers. Uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh Lord, what a testimony uh, for, for Brother Tobin, that his whole family, Lord. Lord, <laughs> Lord, will this inspire others just to pass out some cards, some invite cards? Because, Lord, his family has disowned him. They will not talk to him. They want nothing to do with him. Because he wants to lift your name. Oh, Lord, help us in this time. Help us, Lord. Lord, be with us in this worship service. And Lord, I, I speak a, a fresh anointing over uh, my mother-in-law, Marty. Lord, may you just ease her pain. Uh, Lord, just that she'll have the discernment that if it's bad enough that she can call uh, 911 or the people that can come to her service. But Lord, may we right now, in an emergency, in every emergency, call 911 and that's straight to the portals of heaven and you sent the Holy Spirit for us to rely on at all time all times Lord there's no pause button all the time and Lord I'm just so grateful for this time thank you for everyone that showed and Lord may we just lift our voices and worship you in your beautiful name Amen. 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 good morning if you're able please stand and turn to number 653 we're going to sing the first and last verse. Yes, I know. In Michael County provides, oh my goodness. 
And Rankin County provides all the <laughs> food for kids. But how are they going to get there to get it? If they don't have a way to get there, they're not going to get it. So let's bring some food, okay? Let's bring some food. Put it up there in the back. What else? Regular meetings? They're up there. The first Sunday, or first Saturday, excuse me, in July, which will be the 6th, I think. Don't hold me to that, but I think it's the 6th. We will be, the ladies will be meeting here at um, 10 o'clock. Please come. If you haven't come, try it. Look around. You'll notice it's summertime. It's summertime. People are on vacation. People are at the river. People are, I don't know what people are doing. But just be faithful. Just Remember, just because you're not here doesn't mean we don't have to pay the light bill. And you're going, well, look at the new TVs. Yeah, look at the new TVs. That should be up and running in a couple of weeks. Okay? Um, so that's a really cool thing. Uh, we're, and we're also making some repairs to our sound system as well. Um, but let me just tell you this. Somebody donated one of those TVs. All the people that do the work don't charge us nothing. All the stuff. All the stuff. Those guys don't charge us. Does that mean we're not going to give them a little something? We probably will. But they don't charge us. So all the labor, and I know one guy put in about eight hours and another guy already put in about eight or ten. So, I mean, this, this would not be cheap if we had to pay them. Wow. Um, anyway. Hmm. That's it. What you got? Yes, uh, Brother Ron. I just want to thank everybody who came yesterday to help us uh, do some projects around the church. Uh, a little bit of spiffing up, a little bit of fixing up. We couldn't have done it without you. And we'll probably do it again when the weather's a little cooler and finish some of the things we didn't get done. But thanks again. Thanks for your commitment to your church and to your God. Yeah, and especially Tommy, because he was the one outside yesterday. <laughs> Tommy was outside painting doors yesterday. Everybody else was having something to do inside. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to say that I'm trying to kick sweets again. And when I came in, Cindy thought it'd be a great idea to do like this, I don't know, delightful, Satan-like, uh, uh, just, I don't know, uh, Cinnabon type thing. Oh, man. And I can't lie to you, they didn't probably see this, but I think I went to it three times and opened it. <laughs> I, really did. I really did. I was like, oh, come on, dude, you're doing good. I can't do it. I can't do it. But uh, we're going to have the offering at this time. But, Doug? I had a call over here. Thank you for the stage. Many questions you Talking to something this past week. It's going to be a pleasure to be going down to church this morning to be a little bit on the uh, prayer request. Lord, let's be on, on the road track at this time. Lord, let's bless our offering. Be a high pastor. Christ, give a deep prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.
worship as Diane sings our special.
Amen. 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 I love when I can hear a song about someone that I know that the song matches up to and who they're singing to, and I see that in them. And man, that whole time I'm sitting there over there and I'm just rejoicing in how good our Savior is, what He did on Calvary, but more importantly, I can just see Elaine now, Diane's mom, saying, hey, look, there she is. That's her. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? When will we celebrate? When will I tell you more about Jesus than I will you my circumstances and my problems or a stronghold I can't get over? Come on, man. It's Jesus. It has to be all about Jesus. So last week, um, the scene, not the story. And this is the weirdest thing. It could be Paula because of... Um, I can probably get over it, but it's almost like it's coming... The feedback is coming right from this amplifier. Fire, fire, fire. That's, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> so I can try to get over it or I can just, I think I'm hyped up enough, I might not need it. Um, but seeing not the story, yeah, because I'm definitely not going to be able to preach like this, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's good. I don't know if y'all, can y'all hear me? I don't even know if this is working, but if it is, that's cool. Uh, I want to I want to stay focused on this. So the scene, not the story. We're going to be in First Samuel 17. Uh, this is a, a three pointer. Last week we went over it, and I never even made it to 40 through 50, which is beautiful. And um, the scene, not the story, meaning that David, of course, was a sheep keeper, meaning that something going on in your life is the scene, and the story is coming. Because you're trusting in the Lord, you're realizing that what you're going through now is building you stronger for what He's got coming for you. Lifting up that veil just a little at a time because let's face it, I can't handle all of it. i got to handle it in bits and that's what I believe the Lord does and that's how good He is. So, uh, the first, the points we went over last week was believing that who called you had qualified you. And that's what He did for, uh, for David when he was a sheep keeper. Uh, equipped you. And will conquer through you. And this week is the conquer through you. Uh, so it's the scene, not the story. And I'm going to uh, uh, quickly go through um, uh, 40 through 50. But give me one second. So we saw last week that David, a mere sheep keeper, was called, anointed as king, qualified by God. Not by man or even appearance. Uh, says so in verse 13 of chapter 16. And the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David when he was anointed. Uh, from that day forward. So keep that in thought. When you were born again Christian and you accepted Christ, the Spirit is in you. Uh, we got into that last week. You don't have to beg for the Holy Spirit to come. Uh, and when the Lord is with, <coughs> who can be against? As simple as that. And that's out of Romans, of course. Uh, you are clear-minded and centered in His thoughts. And now David can see that a sheep keeper, that sheep keeping was the scene the preparation and the training to realize that God <laughs> will make us more than conquerors. And that's what he means in uh, Romans 8.37. Uh, so now he understands that the training is over. And, and, and I put this on my notes because it's beautiful because that means it's go time. Like that was the training. I was a sheep keeper. I wasn't even, when, when, when Samuel came there to, a, a, to anoint David, David was out doing his thing. They didn't even consider him because he was a teenager. Uh, at that time, probably about 13. Now he's 14, 15. Uh, I won't get into that debate because it takes away from the message. So I'm going to read. Um, I can't. I can't. Hold on one second. All right. So hopefully you guys can hear me. I just sorry. It's not y'all. I just want to stay focused, and I can't with that thing backfiring on me. All right, so we're going to read uh, 40 through 50. I'm going to kind of read it fast, and then I'll go through this because I want to get through this. And thank you, Diane. Thank you, everybody, for your time uh, because it's just it's too good to overlook. So let's, uh, let's get into it. It says, Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved forward and came near David, with his shield bearer in front of him. So now it's two against one. I'll get into that. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for 
He was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, I <laughs> am I a dog that you come to with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds and to the air and to the beasts in the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword. Oh, this is beautiful. And with a spear and with a javel, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts of God, of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Verse 46, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead body of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth, all the earth, not for his credit, for David, uh, not for David's credit, nothing he did. This is seeing what he's, this is conquering in the Lord. And that's why it's, it, that's where that humble thyself, Paul keeps saying. Uh, over and over in, in many scriptures, humble thyself. So this is about God, not about David. Uh, but it's what you can, it, what we can do, what we can conquer with God in us, and never stop our doubting. And then it says, "Is a God of Israel? That's who's going to do it." And forty-seven, and that all the assembly may know that the Lord saves not with the sword and the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into My hand. When the Philistine arose and came and draw, uh, drew near to David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine, 49. And David put his hand in his bag and took a stone and a sling and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face. And verse 50 says, So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling, with a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. So, no sword. So verse 40. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, keep me focused. Uh, Lord, I love sound systems, but Lord, uh, I do ask in this time, can we get this thing straight at some point? Uh, I pray on that. <laughs> Uh, but Lord, right now I do have a serious message. I believe you put it on my heart for many weeks. Lord, there's a Goliath in our lives. But is there a Lord Jesus Christ that we're having faith in? Or have we fallen from our faith, Lord? Do we trust you on what you did 2,000 years ago and, and sing beautiful songs about how you died on a cross for me, for each person that's here, Lord, but we can't trust you the next week? Lord, Erase these anxieties. Let us have the faith that David had, the heart that David had. Lord, that we may know that we're going through a scene in our life, but that's not the story because we're trusting in you, Lord, that there's more to be revealed and prevailed. Lord, you will prevail. You are. You called us more than conquerors. Thank you for this, Lord. In your beautiful name, amen. amen. So in verse uh, 40, then he took the staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put him in a shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. So David used the same tools. I thought this was interesting. He used before as a shepherd to kill the lion and the bear. <laughs> what God used before. In other words, anything that's going on in your life right now, and you don't think you have enough, I promise you, if you're getting on your knees in the morning and you're praying to the Lord, you let Him decide what you, what you need and what you have. Because, I, hey, for the longest time, I kept praying for something, and what I needed to be doing is repenting on something and asking the Lord to take some things away that aren't honoring to Him. That's what I had to start getting into. So that He would use again the five stones were because Goliath, I touched on this a little bit last week, uh, more out of excitement, if y'all can believe that, uh, that he had four brothers. And I just love that, that he, you know, with the Lord's provisions, he can, he can grab those five. Uh, and I love the confidence he had. Love at the end of this verse, he approached him. He said the bold words to David, gathered his own weapons and renounced Saul's armor because he said he hadn't tested it. Because we all have that specific armor of God he made just for us. But if he never went into the battle, what would it matter? Ultimately, David had the faith not just to talk, not to, just to renounce, not just to prepare, but also to actually draw near to the Philistine. That's real faith. In other words, hey, sing it, bring it. 
Like he, he wasn't just talking this stuff in, in, in front of everybody to sound cool. When he went down to, to bring the, uh, the fruit and the cheese to, uh, to his brothers, and they're like, what are you doing here? What are you, what are you doing? And then he hears what he hears, and then and it's just beautiful. So just remember, like we, we have that Goliath that's in front of you. Hey, don't just talk it. If there's sin in front of you right now or something going on and, and, and you're, heaven forbid, you're calling someone and trying to get some advice and they've given you the same. You've called five people, five Christians, biblical Christians, that you're born-again Christians that are in the Word, but, but yet you, for some reason you still want to do the same thing. Maybe it's time for a shift. Maybe it's time for a change. And David had that kind of confidence. 41 through 44. We'll see where... Uh, Goliath not only curses and underestimates David, but God as well. It says, And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him. He was but a youth, ruddy, handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David. The Philistine came to David, said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beast of the field. So let's look at this for starters. Look closely at the end of verse 41. With his shield bearer. So it's bad enough. I, I think this sometimes. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. And you don't have to say it out loud, but if you want to, you can. Correct me if I'm wrong. How many times has something in your life, uh, something bad will happen, and then all of a sudden it seems like, eight other things will happen in the same day. But then i got to start wondering, wait a second, are they really happening or is that where my mind's at? Did I slip in my faith? Did something happen? So I don't even think that phased, and that's why I don't believe there's a lot of commentary on it. I don't believe that phased, David. And I want, man, I want that so bad in my life. I want it. Hey, someone's sick, someone's doing this, someone's slandering my name. Hey, as for me and my house, we're going to worship the Lord. High five, baby, high five. Yeah. Let's go, Jamie. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Like, I want that so bad. Instead of, oh, what are we going to do? That The odds are against us. No odds are against us. No odds are against us. We're letting Satan prowl because we're making it easy on him. And he didn't do this. So technically, with the arm bearer, it's two against one. Verses 42 through 44. Let the mocking begin. And isn't that the way it always is? That's what Satan does. That's where the whispers in your ear come. That's when, the, when people you don't need in your ear are telling you, oh, I guess, it, oh, I thought you were old Christian. Yeah, that's what all you Christians say. Hey, I used to go to church and I know there's someone did this and someone did this. Hey, man, what about a relationship? Man up. Stop doing that. Man, hey, look, your past is over. Take the diapers off. It's time to man up. i got to tell myself that sometimes. Yeah, my daddy spanked me a little bit. Man up. Get over it. He wasn't still talking about what happened as a sheep keeper because he's focused. Now he's looking at the person mocking him and he's heard it for the longest time. It says in verse 42, Goliath disdained him, meaning considered to be unworthy or to refuse or reject him. Remembering he had a hard time seeing David at this point. And I love that. Like He was like, who are you? That most commentators uh, uh, say that he was 14 years old or possibly 15. Uh, no facts on that. I, Again, that's not trails I try to go down because I missed the, the whole message. Uh, so if that's an argument you want to get into with someone else, uh, you can call my phone for a prayer or something like that, but I'm not going to argue with you about that. Um, so 15 years old, let's call it. And remember, he's way smaller than most of, the, uh, uh, most of all the soldiers. Uh, then in verse 43 and 44, it says, Goliath cursed David and says, I am, am I a dog? You know? Take your look. This is sorry. This is not in the Bible. This is me because this is what I think sometimes when the <clears throat> what the enemy wants to say and how he underestimates me. I said, take your little boy boy toys and go play somewhere. I mean, think about it. He's probably like, I'm a giant. What are you doing here? And that's what he's saying here. That's why he's mocking him. He's like, what are you doing here? Hey, you, hey, look. It's not working. That's what the whisperer is saying. It's not working. That's why bad things are still happening. No, bad things happen to great people all the time. I mean, sorry. And they really don't, because it only happened once, and that was to Jesus Christ on the cross. So when people come to me and say that, that's the exact rebuttal I always give them. But David knew it wasn't a fair fight, but what he, he knew it wouldn't be a fair fight. What he knew was Goliath thought he knew, were to, what him and Goliath knew were two totally different things. Sorry. Uh, see, it isn't Goliath and his armor bearer against David. It's Goliath 
and his armor bearer against David and the Lord God of Israel. The battle is over. Anyone with any spiritual understanding could finish the story right here. But the enemy always underestimates God's people. Always. I've seen men and women that have dealt with Goliath you can't imagine. I got a text earlier today that said, hey, I guess, it, I, I, I guess the prayers didn't work. Our relationships, it's, it's, it's done. I guess it didn't work. But I don't believe that. Because I have to believe that in, in this situation, it's someone that keeps continuing going back to their old ways. Hey, God's house, God's rules. You think I can cheat on Jamie? Because the devil can prowl and I'll go cheat on Jamie and get up here and preach with a full heart? No way. The Lord will deal with you. Hey, you might not believe this, and you can debate this, and I know there's probably some, there could be some, I doubt it, but some first free will that might, that, that might not believe this. We still serve an Old Testament God. Amen. Hebrews uh, 12 says it. He'll chastise you with love. So, hey, I can listen to the mocking of the enemy. I'm not mocking God by the way my lifestyle is. You want to see some prayers start being answered? I mean, the way, you, the, the way that Scripture says, ask in His name. But it's hard to ask in His name when I'm living a certain way or, or hugging on a bottle or doing something like that. And ah, Man, that's scary to me. I don't want that. No way. Not, not this old guy. Nice try, wrong guy, Satan. So let's look at David's response. Full of faith and the assurance of the Lord. Verse 45 says, Then David said to the Philistine, I love this. Man, this, I don't know about y'all, man, but this just gets me pumped up. If there's ever like a, sorry to say this, but if there's ever like a physical, I hope not. But if there's ever a physical war, this is some of the stuff I'm going to just pull up and, and read to the... You know, I just, it, it just it gets me going. Look, then David said to the Philistine, Hey, this is David, now little David. He's, he's little. You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javel, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of army of Israel, whom you have defied. This says it all, but think about it. This Goliath, a giant soldier who slayed many, is still underestimating. Think about this just for one second. Goliath's voice was deep. Remember in verse 8 at the beginning of this chapter, he's yelling daily threats every day to the Israelites. Uh, it scared them. I love this. I, I, read, I read a couple different commentaries on this. It said, not only did Goliath scare the Israelites and Saul, but it scared some of his own men, and they were on the same team. Now that's scary. That's scary. I mean, and, and I've been with guys like that. Like, I'm not proud of this, but where if we were getting ready to get in a fight, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm not, I'm not going to tell him this, but because he's such a good fighter, and I'm not a shabby fighter back in those days, but man, I'm, I'm not going to tell him, but I'm a little scared, but I'm glad he's here. And that's kind of what I believe David's saying. He's like, hey, Lord, hey, I got this. So you can underestimate me all you want. Now he hears a small teenager's voice. <laughs> small teenager's voice say, you got to think Goliath and the Philistine soldiers are probably laughing at this point. On the other hand, I'm sure Saul and the Israelites are embarrassed. And that's a point I never looked at, and I didn't get too far on it, but think about that. They're probably embarrassed. They're like, seriously, dude, the odds are against you. You know, think about that in your own life right now. The Goliath is the Goliath bigger than your God. What's winning? What's, what seems like it's winning? Because that's what it is. As a Christian, it's not winning. It's you not surrendering to something. It's you not dropping the rock. It's you not cutting those chains to a past that's holding you back. Yeah, but you don't understand. I want my wife back. Then serve Jesus. If you don't understand. I don't want to drink. Serve Jesus. I don't want to smoke anymore. I, it's hard. I know it's hard. I smoked for years. Serve Jesus. Want it more. Repent on it every day. Will, will you go back to it a little bit? Yeah, I did too. And guess what? I got the voices out of my ear. I, I thought you were Christian. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, thanks, man. Huh? you got to stay focused. Stay focused. So I believe they were embarrassed. But remember, David's not seeing the fancy armor, arm bearer, swords, or a giant because he knows, as we should, that with his faith, knowing the Lord is with him, the battle's already been won. To say, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts is to say, I come as representative of the Lord of hosts, the God of who has heavenly armies at his command. <laughs> I am a sent man. I'm a chosen man. You are sent. You are called. You are chosen. It's predestined. You're conformed. That's, that's what the Word says. 
But sometimes we walk around like when that man came in the parking lot, I was like, yes, will I pray for you? You kidding me, brother? I can't fathom that. I can't fathom that. His whole family, nothing, they don't want to have anything to do with him. Why? What'd you do? Did you backstep? No. I just think about that for a second. That blows my mind. I mean, how do you talk about that? But, but, but seriously, why? Did you make them mad? Did you, maybe they were real funny about relationships and you cheated on your wife. That's not a good thing at all. Uh, but, but I mean, committing adultery is never a good thing. But what would you do? I confess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm out of their lives. See, he's no longer, when he graduates seminary, he's no longer going to hear, I'm proud of you, son. Maybe, maybe not. That's the scene he's going through. But he trusts the scene so much that he knows the story is God's because it says it is. Because he calls us more than conquerors. Because he calls us chosen. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. Man, just to think about that, it blows my mind. It just blows my mind. I come to you in the name of the Lord as a representative. I just love it. A sent man, a man on a mission from God. When will we act like that more? Because sometimes I got to do it myself. I'm on a mission. This week I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. Not just getting through some lyrics on a song and, and getting home, getting go home and do some stuff. I'm on a mission. You want your kids to serve the way you're serving? Get on your knees. Show them better than you could tell them. Man, let them see it. Let them see when you're getting ready to go uh, to, 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 a, to get some heart surgery. Let them see that you say, hey, pastor, you, you got us? Oh, yeah, I got you, man. But you know why I got you? Because I come with the Lord. I come with the Holy Spirit. That's why I got you. I don't puff my thing. Oh, yeah, look at me, man. I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to save the world. No, it's not about that. It's about getting the gospel out. That guy pulls up in a random church. Happens to meet with the preacher. We can barely talk to someone about it because why? We want to keep it to ourselves? Then you don't know the gospel. Yeah, I said it out loud. Yeah, but I'm not... That ain't got nothing to do with neglecting... Get, someone called me out on that a while back. Someone said, well, yeah, but, but that's not my gift. That's garbage. That's a lie. That's not what Paul's speaking of about neglecting the gifts. Spreading the gospel is what we're called to do. He says, go out all the world, from Samaria to all around. Richmond, Virginia, Hungry Road... So let's look at the boldness of what David says next. Verse 46 and 47. I love this. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head and I will give the dead bodies. Man, this is, this is crazy. This is a little teenager saying this. That's what's amazing. And he had to have been with the Lord. It says the Spirit rushed into him. There's no way. Because I don't talk like this. I don't have this kind of boldness without the Lord. I don't have this kind of confidence without the Lord. There's no way. Dead bodies of the hosts of the Philistines this day, to the birds of the air, and to the wild beasts on the earth, that all the earth may know, all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all the assembly may know that the Lord saves, not with a sword and a spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. So it's one thing to tell Saul, hey, yeah, I'm going to kill him. It's an entirely different thing to be standing in front of Goliath and say, hey, you're going to die today. That's a different ball game. Because I've done that before where you're talking and you're like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. You know, and I, I did this, I'm sorry, I grew up fighting. That's just, it's not a good thing. I'm not encouraging it if you're younger, but that's what I did. We disagree. Hey, man, let's go outside. You want grass or gravel? We can do both. Maybe we'll tumble into one of them, but that's what I did. But there were many times, I can admit this now, where my mouth got me in some trouble. And I'm serious. I'm up there and I'm like, what you going to do, man? What you going to do? And I'm thinking in my head, please don't let him throw a punch because this guy's going to kill me. This guy's going to kill me. I still remember. The guy's name was Squirrel. And, and I don't know. Was a, I, think, I think he was like 28, full of muscle and all that. And I believe I was 14 or 15. I was like, come on, man. And then I remember him saying something. And, and I'm still trying to be tough. But I'm like, well, hey, we don't have to do this right now, man. But I will. But we don't have to, you know. And that's it. <laughs> and I think that's what. It, it, but and that's like the opposite of what's going on here, because he's so confident that he's like, "Hey, I, this battle ain't mine. It's it's it, this is the Lord's." And I got to remember that each day. So it's one thing to tell him, you know, Saul. Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. 
adding, I will strike and take your head from you. Man, what a vivid detail. David was bold, but bold in God, not himself. I, sometimes, can I just say this? It's not on my notes, but sometimes, I, I'm sorry, I don't like using the word hate, but I'm going to use it today. Sometimes I hate when Christians that know me say, just remember, it's for the Lord. <laughs> Thanks, man. And nine times out of ten, if I, sorry, now I'm hating and being judgmental. Y'all better pray for me. Nine times out of ten, it's someone that's not even living for Christ. That's what trips me out sometimes. But that could be the test. That could be the scene, not the story. The way I react is maybe something they're looking for. So i got to pick my battles. Every battle that comes to me in that case, I don't have to step up to because the Lord's already won it through His provisions, through His Word. So I can pause long enough while I'm agitated and angry to say, all right, Lord, you told me what an angry tongue does. You know, or what a soft tongue does. I can pause from this and, and, it, and it turns away that wrath. So he knew the battle belonged to the Lord. So now, no glory of his own. It says, <laughs> when I'm done, all the earth will know there's a God in Israel. Verse 47 becomes crystal clear. Saul and the rest of the soldiers of Israel thought that the Lord only could save them with a sword and a spear. That's what they believed. They didn't really believe that the battle was the Lord's. But David, and I love this, man, I love this. David, they didn't believe it. David gives them proof. They're seeing David like, wait a second. So don't, hey, <laughs> don't think it's the guy that can quote the Bible Scriptures. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it is. But I got to, sometimes there's some proof involved. I talked to a guy earlier this week, and I told my wife I wasn't going to do this. Uh, but uh, I talked to a guy earlier this week, and it was kind of funny because he's struggling with some uh, addiction, uh, alcohol, and drugs, and stuff like that. And it was we talked for about, it was about it, we talked for a while, probably three different times. <laughs> and then I don't know if it was the third time or the fourth time, but in between most of them conversations, he was he was kind of down on preachers. I never told him what I did. I just told him I cooked. I like cooking. I like doing some things like that. So he's. <laughs> I mean, he's really down on these preachers. He's like, it's almost like they got stuff scripted. You know, this and that and this and that. And but he's like, man, I like talking to you, though, man. You, you, you seem like you've been there. And, and again, this is all the Lord, not me. And, and it was the funniest thing because he was like, have you ever done drugs? Yeah, I did that. You know, all that. I don't glorify the past. But, I, but where he's at is the scene, not the story. And if I'm expected and called to spread the gospel, then I've got to be patient with that. And that's what I did. And about the fourth conversation, it was hilarious. He was like, you know what, man? I never did ask you. <laughs> Where do you cook? And I was like, well, I cook sometimes at the church, but I'm a full-time pastor. <laughs> and it was just, you could, <laughs> it, was, it was just hilarious. He was like, uh, oh, well, because the first thing he said to me was, man, I, I just, you know, growing up and this, and I get this all the time. Uh, and this is a good way in for Christians, I think. Uh, he was like, you know, I'm not real, um, uh, I'm not real big on religion, religious so-called religious people. And a lot of times I'll say, good, neither am I. But hey, let me ask you a question. Your way got you here. Do you feel broken? Broken? Y'all hear me say it all the time. He draws now out of the broken heart and crushing spirit. Do you feel broken? And before I say the verse, I'll just say, hey, do you feel broken? Yeah, big time. Let me ask you a question because your nine-month-old's gone. You, you and your wife are separated. Do you, do you feel crushed in spirit? Yeah, I do. Guess what? I was there in an empty parking lot almost 17 years ago. I knocked on the door and the Lord came into my life because He's saying, stop fighting me. Hey, hey, Saul, why do you fight me? Why do you persecute me? Stop it. Now let's go do some work. I, I, the rearview mirror is gone, Saul. Uh-uh. Now you're Paul. Let's go do some work. Hey, Simon, rearview mirror is gone. Now you're the rock. Now you're Peter. Let's go. Let God define who you are. Man, that gets me fired up. He will give you into our hands. Again, notice David's humility. It isn't... It isn't... Oh, sorry. It isn't... Uh, he will give you into my hands. David knows this was an our battle. A our battle. Man, him and the Lord. You ever heard that song, Me and God? That's what it made me think about. Me and God. I love that. I'm going to sing that. I don't even care if I can sing. So I'm going to sing that. Next Sunday I'm singing that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that he fought on our behalf of all Israel. If they weren't trusting fully in the Lord, David wouldn't trust 
for them. David would trust for them. So he shows them proof. They're looking at David like, man, something's going on here. This cat is confident. He's been, it, it, the spirit has definitely rushed in him. So it, it, so it says he'll trust for them. And that's how confident David is. Finally, the talk is over. Don't sing, I love these little things. Don't sing it, bring it. Verses 48 through 50. I don't believe they need commentary, but of course I added it. Uh, let's read it. When the Philistine arose and came near to meet David, David hid behind some other soldiers. David hid behind a rock. No, 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 no. This is so awesome. Man, I hope we do this. I hope we do it today with everything in our life. I don't care if someone's dying at the house. I want us to have this kind of faith. This kind of faith. I don't care if you think addiction, you're never going to win the battle. It's not true because the, God, the Lord we serve says it's already won. But you've got to have faith in Him. Man, you got to have... You don't get it. My husband's never going to get it. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Ask my wife. Yes, he is. Through Jesus Christ. Yes, he is. My son's never going to talk to me. Garbage. Yes, he is. My daughter's not going to go... Uh -uh. You trust in the Lord. You keep trudging sometimes. The muck and the mire and watch them pull you up out of it because of your faith. Gosh, man. And I love this. It says, I'm having a heart attack up here. It says, David ran. He didn't hide. He drew near this big giant, little 15-year-old kid. David ran quickly to the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. It's everything he prepped us for. It's everything he said he was going to do. It's everything you're going through in your life. You Just like he said he couldn't test the armor, I can't give you my armor. But together... We were just in it, First and Second Thessalonians. Paul says, build up, encourage one another. Rejoice in the Lord. Together we can do this. Together, it's like the, I was telling Mark yesterday when I saw that little scaffold in the back. It reminded me of the uh, rock, rock and Roll Express and the, um, uh, uh, oh no, sorry, Midnight Express, I think. Someone correct me, maybe. And, uh, but it's a tag team. Uh, old, old school. I'm getting old, old school. But, uh, and the Road Warriors. And they would have a scaffold match. But that's what Christians should be doing. Get someone with you that can tag team this thing. The arm bearer didn't scare. He didn't even have to have a sword. It's all the stuff he'd been training with. No panic, no hiding. He didn't drop to his knees and pray. Instead, he ran to the battle line. God supplies what he demands. God supplies what he demands. No weapons will prosper. Come on, let's go. With Christ, we can run to the enemy with boldness, faith, and perseverance. So in 49 and 50, it says, David takes, I'm going to get through this, I don't care. David takes one stone, not ten, because I can't lie to you. Well, I'm just being honest. I love this. I love the run. I love the, but there are sometimes I need this kind of confidence. And that's where you have the church. And that's why you have the gathering of the saints. So if you're a strong Christian and people come to you all the time and you're afraid to reach out to someone and say, look, man, can you pray for me? I'm going through some discouragement. You're not a strong Christian. Stop thinking that. That's not the way it is. Paul needed every bit of a... Went through these letters and all this. And, and Harry, Brother Harry brought it up today that throughout all the letters uh, in Ephesus and Philippi and all those, that he would encourage... He always started out encouraging. And I try to do that with men that I witness to. And, uh, and, and, and I hope... I know for a fact my wife's doing it. Like, encourage that person. And, and that doesn't mean encourage them because you're building up to break them down. No. Encourage them to, to encourage them through the Scripture. David takes one stone, not ten, and slings it at Goliath's head and kills him. One commentator said, this battle was won. Oh, I love this. This battle was won out with the sheep. It was when he was with the sheep that the battle was really won. In those lonely hours with the lambs, David talked to God. <laughs> Man, I love this. And took a lot of target practice with his sling. Now his communion with the Lord and his skill with the sling are both used by God. Man, let him determine what he's going to use. Just trust in him. Mm. And the use of the sling, it requires much practice to hit the mark. But when once this dexterity is acquired, the sling is nearly as fatal as the musket or a bow. Everyone else thought, check this out. This is the devil. Check this out. 
Everyone else thought Goliath is so big, I can't beat him. David thought Goliath is so big, I can't miss him. I love that, man. That's an someone. Just someone yell out a yeah, amen, please. Because that, that's an amen. Yeah, because everybody else is saying, hey, he's too big, I can't beat him. Hold on. No, he's, he's so big, I can't miss him. And I love that. I'm running at you. Devil, you hear my voice. I'm running at you. And you better be careful saying, search me, oh Lord. He'll search you. I'm telling you. If you ask me right now, and this isn't to discourage anybody, if you ask me right now, when is the most trying times in your whole life been? That surely it was your mom dying. Your uh uh. It was when I, when, I, when, I, when I said yes to the calling to preach. Because you're going to have people come along and they're going to be, oh man, I'm in, Pastor. High five, I'm in. Hey, Pastor, I read this today and it's good. And oh man, it just seems like they're defeating Goliath and all that. And then the next thing you know, you show up to their house and they're dead. They're dead. And you're like, you And then the mom looks at you and says, he was doing so good. He was doing so good. I'm done hiding. I'm out of the basement. I'm done hiding. I don't have to do it anymore. A man of less faith might have been too nervous to take the proper aim. Verse 50, David prevailed, which means to prove more powerful than the opposing force, to be victorious. But come on, man. Come on. Oh, come on. Lunch can wait. Isn't whipped cream the best part of an ice cream thing? Like, it's got to wait. Because I wasn't going to touch on this, and I see Bert shaking his head because he knows where I'm going, but it's just too good not to, to do it. Verse 51 says, Then David ran, he's dead now, he's on his face, ran over the Philist, to the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. They fled. Period. David ran. He never, remember, he underestimated him. The enemy is underestimating you this week. The enemy is t showing you that you can't do this, you can't do this, but he, it's not David's sword. Goliath never pulled his sword. So when you're with the Lord, it says, David, just remember when you're with the Lord and, and the Lord's with you and He's promised you all this beautiful stuff, I'm telling you, it's time, the best times to use it sometimes is going to be the times that you don't feel like you can use it. That's when he's saying. That's when I almost picture the Lord standing there when you're just, you're at your wits end. I've been there. I've been there just crying, weeping. I was like, man, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I just picture the Lord behind me. Like when, uh, because I've gotten a little chubby, sometimes I have to get Jamie to put my vest thing on because I can't get that part into the, so she'll, so she'll, have, so she'll have to help me. And I picture the Lord doing that. I picture He's like, like when I turn around and I'm in defeat, not only is He there with love, but He's showing me, hey Scott, I got your armor. Remember, you're with me. I got you. I got you. No matter what, I got you. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about it. No matter what, I got you. What do you mean, Lord, no matter what? Hey, if you leave today, or I call you home today, I still got you. I got got you. I mean, that's beautiful. David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him. Cut off his head with it. First, <laughs> David made certain the enemy was dead. I love that. You cannot stop short in dealing with your sin or your spiritual enemies. You must kill them dead. Second, David uses Goliath. I already got ahead of this. His own sword to kill him because he underestimated him. See, David, David never read Timothy 4.12, but he lived it. Let no one despise you of your youth, but be an example to the believers in the Word and conduct and love and spirit and faith and purity. David led by example and led Israel to a great victory. Man, that is gold. Leading by example. Leading by example. I'm sorry, man. There was a time when, when, when John and Jennifer were, were really, really, really sick and we were on our knees praying and, and, and just, man, just praying. Hey, Jamie, there. Hey, he's not doing good. And I hope Brother John doesn't mind this or, or, or Jennifer, but I was like, they're, they're not, I, I don't, they're just not doing good. Let's pray. And then I look over here and see him singing and lifting God's name. Hey, that was the scene. The story's coming, brother. The story is here. It's to glorify our Lord. Satan thought he had you on the go. Satan thought he'd put traps on your house. Doctors might have told you something, but the great physician said, hey, I got you. Does that mean you're free of, of pain and everything else? No. But it means now you're walking with someone else. That's what it is. Now you're walking with someone else. 
And that's what I love. I'm going to ask Diane to play the music. And not, I don't want the sin to win. I don't want it to win. What do I keep crawling back to that I'm not fully given to the Lord? It's got to be something. You hear me talk about drugs, drinking. It's not all about that. Maybe you and your wife aren't getting along real well right now in, in, in uh, uh Maybe a, another girl at work said, hey, man, you're, I hope your wife knows what she has, man. You're pretty, pretty good looking dude, man. Uh oh. Hey, do tell. No, not do tell. Yeah, she does. And I love her and she loves me. And together we, we stumble and we, and we fall on some things, but no matter what, we get right back up because we know the Lord Jesus Christ has got our armor for each of us. And as a married couple, and that's what this ring should mean today, but I feel it's lost its sting. As a married couple, we're, we're, uni we're, we're unity in one. We're doing a discipleship class right now, and it just got over the, the marriage part of it, and relationships, and how I'm acting in that relationship. Hey, look, if your son or daughter has went astray, stop losing sleep over it. Get on your knees, pray, and if they're not getting the message, hey, someone else will give them the message. Or the reality is this. And I used to hate when preachers said something like this because it almost erases the whole message. Or does it? Or guess what? Maybe they won't make it. Oh, come on, man. You were doing it. You had us going. The battle line and the, and the armor and the underestimating. And you had us going, man. Come on, though. And you, you gotta, can't you leave that part out? Hey, edit that part out, Harry. No, we can't edit it out. It's real. This thing is real. There's someone I want to witness to. There's someone that's going to say, you know what, man? I'm not about your God. Why does it have to be your God, your Jesus? I do believe there's another way to heaven. And then heaven forbid, and this has happened in my life, and I'm sure it's happened in y'all's, where I look on Facebook and they're dead, and I just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. Now, I don't know what they did in their own time. I can't say that. I don't know what they did. Maybe they asked the Lord at the last minute to come into their hearts. I don't know. Do I believe He can do that? Yes. How do you know? Thief on the cross. Game over. Mic drop. You know, that's it. So I believe He can do it. But this is a personal walk. And if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm sick of saying it's a two-parter. It's never a two-parter. The main focus is if you don't know Jesus Christ today, you come up. I know it's weird. Maybe you're shy. You come up. You simply just profess His name. We'll all stand up. I don't care what other churches do. We'll all stand up. We'll pray with you. And by us all standing up, it's like soldiers. Look what he did to Ezekiel. He turned dry bones, not into people. He turned dry bones into soldiers. So I want to serve a God like that. I want to know a God like that. I want to know what eternity looks like. I want, I have to. Because it's just so personal. If you need one of us this week, reach out, call. Stop thinking you can do it on your own. None of us can. Reach out to someone and say, hey, you got a second? Yeah, what's up, man? I never told you this, but my cousin's gay and she's really struggling with some stuff, Scott. And, and I don't condone that, but, but what, can, what can I do? What can, what can we do? Because, yeah, you can put that burden on me. Let's carry it together. Remember what they did to the paralyzed man? They didn't bring him, put him at the foot of the, the door. They cut a hole and reeled him down. And then all of a sudden, then their sins, your faith has made you well, then their sins are, they got the package deal. So once again, you're struggling with something, going through something, and someone over and over has told you to try something. Hey, stop being stubborn. Try it. You never know. You know, I don't want a midsection. Sometimes Jamie in the other room will be like, She'll hear the little, because I'm not going to lie to you, I tried, like if we had, we had some cake the other day and I was trying to pop it open so she wouldn't hear. U crops is awesome for keeping that thing tight, but I, I couldn't do it. I just, it's loud. I'm like, man, I got to talk to, I got to talk to U crops. We got to, we got to get something going, but it's loud. And I just, I couldn't, you know, but it's temptation. But now, guess what? It's not in the house. It's funny because sometimes I'll throw it away, but she came home and she's like, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to enjoy a piece of that chocolate cake. And I was like, I see. Did you throw it away? I sort of. 
it's it was good. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I mean, but it was good. Uh, but isn't that what sin can look like sometimes? And I'm sorry, I'm not saying chocolate cake is sin. I'm not. But for me, it is. But 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 that's what it will look like. He'll make it look. Brother George uh, did it. Uh, did a thing today out of uh, him and Harry. Uh, uh, First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians. A little bit of second. But it's that's. They're going to make it look good. Satan's making this stuff look normal. Making it look normal. So when I mention like gay parade or I went to a restaurant where people had shirts on and stuff like that, there's no condemnation. The beginning of uh, Romans 8, no condemnation. I mean that. But I do pray. You can't stop this tongue from praying. And that Satan hates that. How does he do it? In the member in the wilderness, he says, it is written. You're defeated. It is written. So as we pray, if you need to come do business at the altar, please do. It's an open place. It's an open place to, to kneel, to pray, to not worry about who's watching you or who's looking because you know who is watching you and honoring you when you come to this altar? The Lord Jesus Christ. He hears our cries. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh Lord, Lord, I thank you for, I thank you for the altar, Lord. I thank you for a time I can, I can bring my worries and my anxieties to you, Lord, that that maybe I'm in a situation right now where it seems like the devil is winning, Lord, and a lot of non-believers are around me, or, or Lord, it's all over TikTok or whatever it looks like, Lord, but that is not true, Lord. It's deceiving, Lord. It's deceivers. The deceptor is at his... Oh, he thinks he's licking his chops right now, Lord. He really does. Satan thinks he has won this. He has not won for our health. He has not won. He has not won, Lord. It's impossible. If I'm with you, Lord, I just I, I want that confidence that David has. That this church, yesterday I was so happy to see people come together and just clean, laugh. Uh, we fed one another. It's just a beautiful thing, Lord. Lord, I will wash feet, put me in the muck and the mire, throw me anywhere you call me, Lord, but I just want to be present. And Lord, I can't do that with a fistful of sin. Lord, I'm asking today that if anything is not honoring to you and anyone that's here, Lord, lift it. That's when the church will be built from within. Hearts, Lord. Hearts will be changed. That's what you said to the disciples. I send the Helper, the Holy Spirit. Lord, will we walk with this confidence today, Lord? Will we run to the battle line when things go down? It's hard. Lord, it's hard. But you chose us. All are called. Few are chosen. Lord, I believe we have a... It's deployment time, Lord. The soldiers are here. I know it's a hot day, Lord, but can we grab a handful of, of, of your word is what it is. It's, it's, it's directing someone to hear your word. Not Scott Watts. Your word. That's sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord. That you can transform hearts. Because that is the scene and the story is coming, Lord. Thank you for this. Thank you that I can that I can use those stones and I don't need a sword, Lord, because I come with you. Lord, I pray for my marriage right now. And I pray for Marty. And, oh, Lord, I pray for oh, just so many, Lord. Anyone that's involved in this church, Lord. So many mean the world to me. Brother Gene and Harry and uh, George. And, oh, man, Lord, there are so many. Brother Ron and Mary and just encouragers built in seeing Cindy and Tommy in the kitchen and, and, and maybe brother uh, Ron and Barbara, they send me something and Lord, I won't get every name, but it's not because I don't want to. They're, it's encouraging one another, Lord. Yes, we're a small church, but I think we can do mighty things in Your name and it will happen inside of our homes, Lord. And prayers that we prayed 10 years ago are being answered. Loved ones are coming back in our lives. Lord, I want this. Thank You, Lord. And if anything's not right or honoring you, take it away, Lord. Strip it down. Lord, thank you for this valuable time, Lord. That we don't have to worry about lunch or that a restaurant's going somewhere, Lord, but that we can focus on you once and for all. When will this get serious? Because the world's taking sin serious. When will we take your word serious? Lord, thank you. Thank you for a beautiful life. Thank you for a beautiful wife and a beautiful son. 
and Lord, people around me that can help me when the breastplate of my armor gets gets a little fragile that can call me and pray with me or maybe even in their own house pray with me. That Miss Manis can take me aside and, and, and speak to me and, and encourage me. That, that Diane can play beautiful music and it just touches hearts, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, thank you for the healing and much more to come for Jennifer and, and John. And Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Brother Harry and Tina. And Lord, I'm sorry. I know it's I know what the word says about lengthy prayers, but Lord, this is legit. Lord, I need their love. I need the love of every single person in this church to build. For Brother Mark to call me. For Brother, oh man, just over and over, Lord, help us. Keep sending the people, Lord, and may we love on them. May someone that's new that walks in the door know that they can call on us anytime, Lord. I know my schedule is busy, but I will make time the best I can, Lord. Help me with this. I am only one man, but as a church, we are many and we are with you. Lord, thank you for this time. And Lord, just uh, may we go like you told Gideon with this might of ours. In your beautiful name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging in. Uh, it's just, I love this church. I really do. I think, I think the Lord's doing something. I think He's doing something more than just for numbers. I really do. Uh, I've seen so many people uh, grow. Uh, the discipleship class has been amazing. Uh, uh, Brother Larry, Mark, Wes, and, and I know that it's a small group, uh, and Brother Gene, and we're learning. We're learning. We're learning. That's what's going to be so great about these small groups. Uh, eventually, I'll get, uh, when we go through the, the first series of it, we'll get some other men in the church, possibly George, possibly, you know, whatever it looks like. Uh, the, these small groups are so good because it's honesty. It's saying, hey, I, you know what? I didn't look at it that way. I kind of I kind of blew Jamie off in that way. What can I do to, to be more there, to be more present for her? When she says for the 50th time, are you listening? <laughs> and she's shaking her head yeah but thank you guys seriously for coming and, and just continue to uh, 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 I do uh, man uh, and again I know I shouldn't call out names please don't take it personal if I didn't call out your name I love Robin Pat Brown I almost want to go down the whole aisle here and just say everybody's name but I do love you all I love that Pam keeps showing up uh, brother Tyrone just showed up uh, uh, everybody that helped yesterday uh, Brother Doug in the back. I mean, you do so much for the for the church. Thank you, and uh, Paul, and just it's everybody. It's just it's a beautiful thing, and I think when we can look at it like the gathering of the saints, then God be with who can be against. I'm going to ask Brother Gene to close us out. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here today, lay our burdens at your feet. We also come in celebration that you've given us life, you've given us a path through our darkest time, you've given us a church that we can lean on. And that church is made of many people doing small things to do great wonders. Lord, we're truly thankful and truly blessed to have our pastor Scott and his wife Jamie guide them, protect them, fill them with wisdom, and peace to know that this parish will grow, that we are growing, and that your love surrounds us every day. And be with those family members that have gone ahead of us to prepare our home, those that are here with us. May we reconnect with all those that we need and that we hold dear. And we travel with the great knowledge that we walk side by side with our Lord Jesus Christ.